Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 134. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Felicia Gladson dug up windgames backslash comp backslash wrmwld. Okay, comp and this one, which I think is going to be worm world. Oh, we even got a worm.exe and a worm edit.exe. Okay, we might actually have an editor with this thing. Um, we got some WAV files, BWCC, so we're probably going to get those um, checkmark graphics and with the little dot patterns and everything. And a text file. Worm World for Windows PC Plus Special Version by Kevin NG. I don't know why, but that name sounds slightly familiar for some reason. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Note about sound, the game. This is a Windows game requiring thought and reactions to succeed. After loading the game, simply choose the load level choice in the menu and choose level. It is recommended that you begin with the Teach levels and complete them in order before proceeding to the harder Devil levels. Okay. Game deliberately lets you load any level without first completing the previous level. This is designed to reduce the frustration level as when you get stuck, you can eat, try another level instead. Okay, so the fact that it suggests you can get stuck means this might be like a puzzle type game. Main character is the worm. The worm is basically a dumb animal and will not react in the most life-threatening situations. You must guide the worm to the safety of the exit tube by placing command blocks in his path to tell him what to do. Okay. So what are our controls here? Bottom of the screen, there's a small bar of three-dimensional icons. When you click the left mouse button somewhere on the screen, the current icon will be placed on the screen. Right button will erase an icon that you have placed. And we've got a bridge icon, an anti-gravity icon, and a stop icon. Hmm. Oh, and apparently this guy was in um, England, because he's charging a small sum of five pounds. Which, if I'm remembering the way the cur- yeah, or ten dollars. So yeah, five pounds would be of roughly ten US dollars at this point in history. So, let's see what we got here. Worm World for Windows. So, okay. As I suspected, we had the check mark. <laughs> the check mark buttons. Um, okay, load level. Said start with the teach level, so. Okay. So if I don't do anything, is he gonna like walk off and go. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't make that sound. That was the game. <laughs> like, like I was about to make that sound myself, and then the game made it. <laughs> oh, that was great. Okay. Um, <laughs> restart level. So I guess what we need to do is stop the worm, and then build a bridge. Uh, that was not a bridge. That, or it actually has to be placed in line? It'd be kind of weird, but I can see that happening. Yeah, you actually have to place it in line with him. <laughs> uh... Okay, that's kind of weird. Like, you have the fastest time for this level at 10 seconds. Why are you using the critical stop icon? That's kind of bizarre. I'm trying to think how we're going to do this. So we probably need a bridge here and there. And that looks like that would be it. I'll have this at the ready just in, ca just in case. No, I didn't think you would. Oh. There is a fall limit. Two, three, four. And that would get us over to here. And then we bounce him back the other way. 
And hopefully he can survive that fall. So far, so good. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So the question I'm kind of asking myself right now is what happens when he pushes this over the edge? Oh, block's falling. I'll create a nice little platform for him. I'm going to set up a bridge right here ahead of time. As well as a do not pass over here. And now we'll bridge across this gap. So did I do this okay? Bridged across. Fell down fine. Yeah, it looks like this will work. There we go. So I think I get the general idea. Let's actually load up one of the devil levels to see just how bad it gets. Okay, so the only thing we get to go with in this level is anti-gravity. So I'm guessing if I place that there, it's going to make my worm, yep, go up onto the ceiling. Oh. I thought it would just make him shoot upwards. I didn't think it would actually keep him on the ceiling. Actually, maybe I'm going to go back to one of the teach levels. So yeah, this is actually a really cool game. I would definitely call this potentially potentially a hidden gem here. So, again, this was Worm World by Kevin NG. And apparently the PC Plus version, whatever that means. Um, yeah, I would say definitely check this out if you can find it. Um, let's take a quick look at that editor, too. Yeah, looks like an editor. Make your own levels. Place blocks everywhere. Place lots of exits. I'm just messing around. Can we place multiple? I'm pretty sure that would give the game a fit. <laughs> Having multiple starting points. Um, yeah, let's not do anything with that. <laughs> and I did notice, too, that the editor only allows you to save if you've got the registered version. But yeah, definitely worth checking this one out. Next up, Zed Supremus has dug up DOS games backslash PD1 backslash puzzlers. Yet another puzzle game from the looks of it. Uh, 29 files. I already saw the exe. And there's a whole bunch of puzzle files. They've also got challenge.txt, orderinfo.txt, and a doc file. Um, the doc file is 53 kilobytes big. That might be an actual doc file and not just text. Um, but anyways, let's see how much we actually can see in the game without having to read the, read the files. Um, so we got Puzzlers by Dennis Yelton for unregistered user. Okay, do we have mouse controls? We do not. So, not quite following what's going on here. Press escape for main menu. Highlighted active keys indicate which keyboard keys to use. Interesting. So I can either use the arrow keys or the one, two, three keys. Whoa. What the? Uh, I didn't even have the puzzle scrambled. <laughs> okay, so menu. Oh, there's actually a whole bunch of puzzles here, so it's not just this one thing here. So we could have like an alphabet soup 7x7, seven seven, which looks <laughs> very intimidating. We could have a 6x6 six six quilt, which looks equally intimidating. 5x5 <laughs> um, five five design. Oh. So basically it lets you create your own quilt puzzles or use a randomly generated computer design. Hmm. But you can't use the design mode without registering, from the looks of it. Uh, what else have we got here? Save, load, erase, scramble. The solve feature is also 
stuck with the registered users. Also, I just noticed the guy's from Austin, Texas. Um, sound is on, speed is whatever. Um, license. I'm trying to figure out how much the guy wants for this. So apparently the guy wanted $12.50 plus $2.50 for shipping. So a total of $15 to purchase the game. And that would be US dollars because the guy's in the US. So let's, let's see how we get on here. So we'll leave it on this one. Let's just set it to a 5x5. Five five. And then scramble. I wonder how long the scramble goes for. It's still going. I think maybe we have to turn it off. Or no, we just hit a button and it stops. Okay, so, um, yeah, this isn't going to be easy. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, this basically looks like hell. <laughs> yeah, um, the controls are kind of weird because you're using, you have to set which direction you're going to move everything in and then you move stuff. Okay, so I managed to get the green diamond figured out there, but there's a lot more left here than just that green diamond. Although we can, we do kind of get a little bit of a hint as to what's going on. Like the, if we look at the light green diamond that I put together there, there's a dark green one that only has that only, like if you look at the entire board here, it only has that particular section right there. So we know that that's going to be right up against the side. The yellow is going to be above it too, because the yellow needs to be a full diamond. So, also that's confusing. Why is there, look at the yellow diamond shapes. Why are there two that seem to be like that? How does that work? I guess if I reload the puzzle, yeah, it looks perfectly fine there. Oh, the colors can be repeated. That makes sense. So because of the way that happened, I had four pieces of the puzzle, but two of them were repeated, which suggests actually pretty much what you're seeing right here. You can see that one of those pieces is repeated but the other two aren't. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. Still, this kind of puzzle is definitely, <laughs> I th I, even a three by three I'd probably have trouble with. Let's just test that theory. Okay, that looks nice and scrambled. So let's see if I can actually solve this one. So, there's going to be enough space to have two fully completed diamonds and it looks like it's probably going to be the light gray and the brown. Okay, so I managed to do that one. By dumb luck, probably. <laughs> DOSBox fast forwarding for the win. Well, curiously, the A is already in the right spot, so that's one thing I don't have to worry about. And now the H, which... <laughs> this is getting particularly difficult to try and s make sure that I don't screw things up too badly. Ooh. So this is almost right, except the N and the M are, <laughs> are in alternate spots that they should be in. Uh, how do I fix that? Yeah, everything just got a little um bad. <laughs> Yeah, this is the exact problem I run into when I try to solve a Rubik's Cube, is that I always end up in this situation where I end up with this one little thing and I can't get it into the right spot without screwing everything else up. I've never been able to wrap my mind around the tricks to the tricks to solve that. I, the, the funny thing is that I know it's like... You can explain the trick to me multiple times over, I still won't be able to figure it out. I don't know why, I just... <sighs> uh, so yeah, this would definitely be a fun game for the kind of people who like those kinds of challenges.
But yeah, I'm running into a brick wall now, so I guess for $15 this is not bad. And our last dig for today comes from Jonathan Gosselin, DOS games backslash arcade 3 backslash Voc Bingo. I'm gonna guess a bingo game with voice capability. No, we do, do have a bingo file there. A fairly large README. Um, some ordering docs. We got a manual there that's 17 kilobytes. What's with the big manuals today? Um, no, let's just run it. Word search bingo power. <laughs> Distributed as shareware for your evaluation. Create and print out word searches and vocabulary bingo cards from your words and clues. Copyright Terry Jepson. That could be either a Jepson or a Yepson. I'm going to guess Jepson just from the fact that it's a guy in Wisconsin from that time period, <laughs> whatever that is. But you know, he's giving an initial copyright of 85 so this might be a very old piece of software that's just he been he's been keeping up to date also wants 32 dollars for it that is not cheap so oh he's even advertising things like site licenses and such hmm Although, you know, given that price point and the fact that he's saying, like, purchase orders for schools and government agencies and stuff, I got a funny feeling that this is actually, he's actually targeting more commercial type markets, like schools and everything. Like, this doesn't seem like something that he was intentionally trying to sell to, like, the individual, but well, we'll see where we end up here. So I'm not sure if it opened something by default. Maybe it did. We can say load word list. Um, we got homonyms, Xmas word, friends, and capitals. I guess we'll leave it where it is. Um, display word search. Oh. Interesting. So, I guess it made a word search just right out of the blue like that. Um... Yeah, I know the printer's not ready. At least, it, at least it lets me back out of that. It doesn't crash the program. So apparently, you can print this. Um, it doesn't have any random letters added though. Which I find kind of weird. And there's also a bingo card thing. Okay, so I guess if you were trying to do like some kind of bingo set or something. And we can generate new cards out of this. It gives us an idea of what words happen to be in this list here. Now you can set it up to put a free space into the bingo cards. Oh, you can actually set the size of the word search too. Although it maxes out at 17 by 17. A 3 by 3 word search would be kinda tiny. <laughs> so yeah, that seems to be all this, what this program does. is basically generates word searches and bingo things. Yeah, that's, that's all this program does. And yet the guy wanted $32 for it and had been producing this program for like seven years. I guess the guy knew his, knew his market, knew his target market, in order to be making money on something like this. And I guess all things considered, like, if you were a teacher and wanted to make like word searches and like bingo cards for students to use, without having to spend like a whole evening like drawing them up manually or trying to come up with them manually. Like I remember one time in school, in like in elementary school, the teacher had the students make their own word searches and then give them to other classmates. And this wasn't exactly something we were expected to do in an afternoon. Like creating the word search itself was homework. <laughs> so, the teacher knew that this wasn't a simple process, yet here we are with a program where you literally give it a bunch of words, push a button, and bam, you've got a word search made. <laughs> so that's pretty useful, I would say, from that perspective. Yeah, this is definitely not, um, this is definitely not, uh, consumer grade software. This is definitely geared more towards a, more towards uh, 
somebody using this for for ex yeah exactly what I said if you if you have need multiple things done very quickly but I guess you know a, a, an individual user could find some use out of this the only thing is they're paying thirty two dollars for it <laughs> so like I mean as thirty two dollars as being a program that's that expensive like this definitely does the job it was set out to do in terms of being used in a multi-user environment but for somebody who's just trying to make a bunch of word searches for their kids or something at home $32 is way too much but then let's face it this is a powerful program when it comes down to it so I guess it depends on what you need it for really